Hello everyone, back in the excavation of Hobbs Barrow, this intriguing point-and-click adventure series. Um, we have picked up a doll, a rag doll. This is Myrtle the rag doll. She's probably going to murder everybody. I'm sure something around here is going to murder everybody, but it hasn't happened yet. Uh, we need to give this doll to a little girl, and she was going to show us the location of Hobbs Barrow, the barrow of the game. Um, last time we were a bit of away with the fairies a little bit by finding the doll in the middle of a mushroom uh, circle which was the gateway to the land of the fairies according to uh, a, the, us as a child. Um, but yes, now we need to go to give this, uh, give this back. So we need to go to the woods I think. Uh, is this the right way? I think it's up, up this way where the little girl was. Oh, this way. There she is. So we give this uh, doll to the little girl. I present to you, Myrtle. Myrtle! I missed you so much! Oh, I did half wonder if that wasn't going to be Myrtle, it was just some random doll. Now, I believe we had a deal. It's evil, obviously. Hide and seek! Come back! Oh, come on. Now we've got to try and chase her. It's in moments like these I thank myself for not having children. <laughs> okay. So, well, let's try and follow her. There she is. Okay, so she's going to run off. We're going hey. to try and find her. Alright. We can do this. We can follow. Oh, now she's gone. Oh, now she's in the hole. Jane? Oh, I love that. The kids, they just they just can't stop laughing when they're trying to hide. That's so funny. Jane, get out of there. Don't make me come in. Fine. Oh, God. <laughs> Curses. The hole is too small for me to fit through. <laughs> Well, that's not a problem because we have a trowel. I've been trying the last couple of episodes. I've been trying to get her to d use this trowel on the hole, and she says, "Oh, I don't want to go dig around." I was around always in the dirt. happiest with a trowel in my hand. And now she is uncovering hidden worlds within the earth itself, clod by clod. That uh, should do it. <laughs> I'm wondering what we're going to find in here, though. Oh, Jane. God. Oh, darkness. Jane, come out this instant. I can't see a damned thing in here. Ah. I need a light source. Okay, so we do have a lantern, but it has no fuel. So obviously we're going to try and find some fuel for the lantern before we can go and get her. So <laughs> I love that. It's so funny. Right, okay. Let's go back to town then. We'll just leave the child giggling in the hole. Uh, actually, we could uh, use our little map here to go back to the village square. Who could have some uh, lamp oil? Maybe the bartender? Can I please have a new candle for my room? Ah. I'll go upstairs and replace it this evening. Can I have one now? It's not dark yet, Miss Bateman. I... never mind. Goodbye. See you soon. Okay, now that's fine because we've got the lantern, so that was a, a little option if we hadn't have discovered the lantern yet. Um, I have nothing else. To okay, he doesn't want to speak to him at all. Who else would have some oil? Blacksmith he needs to light his forge, so he has like the power to to set things on fire. Good day. Yes. I was wondering if you might be able to spare some lantern oil. I don't have much to spare, lass. Paraffin is as rare as hen's teeth in these parts. How much coin do you have? None, I'm afraid. If you're in a bind, I can trade you a small amount. A trade, you say? Aye. Okay, what what will you trade, sir? What can I sir? trade you for some lantern oil? Surprise me. What? Surprise me. Okay. Thanks for your time. Aye. Speak to you later. Uh, could I interest you in a worm, good sir? Um, chisel, a lantern, a worm, trowel, a glove, 
matchbox. I really didn't have much of interest, but... Hmm. I don't think Mr. Crozier would be interested in trading his paraffin for this. I didn't think so. Uh, the glove? Hmm. No. A worm. Hmm. <laughs> and everything else. I, I really... I need to keep my chisel. Or maybe... Maybe not. Hmm. No. We obviously want the lantern. Uh, that is it. Okay, so oof, nothing there. What could? What would a black? Oh, I know, I know. Um, so the blacksmith collects fossils, and there was a fossil um, where that girl was, and now she's not there. I can do it without kind of scaring her. So there we go. I can't pry the fossil from the rock with my bare hands. That is fair, but we have a chisel. Yes! Now the children did say if the fossil was to be touched it would doom the whole village or something. I can't remember Splendid. exactly what she said. Extract it in one piece. Something like if you took it, um, the devil will come after you or the, the devil won't be happy. So we have just doomed the entire village to, to Satan by doing that, but I think it's worth it. Uh, let's go back to the village square. And as I said in the last episode, the puzzles in this so far have been extremely logical, which you don't always get in these type of games, but I'm very happy that so far I've managed to kind of work everything out. Would you trade some of your paraffin for this fossilized ammonite, Mr. Crozier? Now then. It is a beauty, that. It looks familiar. I'll take it off your hands. Wonderful. Let me fetch some paraffin from inside. I wonder if he was going to sort of realise where it's from and then just kind of get angry because I'm just taking there something from their village to give to him. Thank you, Mr. Crozier. Brilliant. So we've got some paraffin. So let's use the paraffin with the lamp. Which I My have lantern done is so. fueled and ready for action. Nice, right? So let's go back. Let's get that. Uh, let's get that girl. She's still giggling. It's having the time of her life. Right. Let's put this lantern to good use. Oh, there's some weird noises here. Let's just check. Yeah, nothing to uh, examine. <laughs> Jane, come out at once. This could be how you get to Holesborough. Why is there this like a heartbeat? Oh god. Oh, it's a badger. Goodness me! Where'd the girl go? She's there! Jane! Silly, what are you doing in that smelly old badger's hole? You were in there! No, I weren't! Yes, you were! Not true. I was hiding behind that tree over there. I got bored of waiting for you. So where can I find Hobbs Barrow? Go north from the church graveyard, up the hill. You'll see some muddy fields on the horizon. That's Mr. Bryden's farm. Hobbs Barrow is there. Don't tell any grown-ups I told you. And thanks for getting Myrtle back. My pleasure. Thank you, Jane. You've been a great help. Oh, that's, that's interesting. So it's another kind of little... Uh, little oddity that's happening in here. So we had this thing where um, Mr. Tillett, back in the first episode, went into the, the lavatories and then disappeared and we just couldn't find him. That could still be explained by him going out the back door, wedging it shut for some reason and disappearing, but... Whew. Okay, actually, what is... So let me just check on my to-do list here. Find Mr. Bryden's farm. Bryden's provided the location of Hobbs Barrow. It's found on the land of a farmer named Mr. Bryden, north of the graveyard. So... If we go to our map, um, 
Where would the graveyard be? That is the church. And I think it was this way. North of the graveyard? Would that be this way? Oh, yeah. Uh, maybe? Oh, a little rabbit there. No, this was the way to the cottage. But maybe that's not north. Let's go back. Maybe it was this way. Yeah, so you didn't want to go that way before. As I yeah. trudged through the barren moors, with only the odd sheep for company, I reflected upon my visit to Bewley thus far. The enigmatic Mr. Shoulder and his puzzling disappearance. The townsfolk of Bewley, who had made it as difficult as they could for me to find Hobbs Barrow. The suspicion, the wariness in their eyes. Only now I know it was actually fear. In the end, it was the innocence of a child, young Jane, that condemned me to my fate. Oh no. Okay. Gate and field. So let's see, this is where the... Yes, it's the farm. Let's have a quick look around. So we've also got the door. There's another bucket there. Goat. Easy girl. I'm not fond of goats at the best of times, but this one seems particularly disagreeable. No, honestly, that doesn't seem that bad. I've seen worse. Uh, the empty bucket smells of rancid milk. Ooh, nasty. This is not mine to take. All right, fine. We don't want to take that just yet. We don't have anything that a goat would like. Let's have a little knock on the door then. What do you want? Yes, let's uh, try and start off on a good foot. My name is Thomasina Bateman. Mr. Bryden, I presume. Aye. What do you want, lass? I understand Hobbs Barrow is located on your land. Oh, well, yes. Why do you ask? I am an antiquarian, Mr. Bryden. I'm writing a volume on the Barrows of England. Oh, I suppose you'll be wanting to dig about it. If at all possible, Mr. Bryden. I was invited to Bewley by Mr. Leonard Shoulder, who told me such an excavation would be possible. Leonard Shoulder? Ha! I haven't seen him in years. The last I heard he were on death's door. There's to be no more digging there, lass. Not since it went so badly last time. Oh, what happened last time? Was there a previous excavation of Hobbs Barrow? Aye. My brother dug it up. Must have been, what, 25 years ago? You see, whatever he found inside, well, it drove him mad. Oh, God. Oh? Aye. I moved back here to look after him. The poor bastard hanged himself not long after. I... I'm sorry, Mr. Bryden. That's terrible. Aye. Time passes, but it were an awful thing. Oh, right, let's see. Uh, let's go start going through these options here. Tell me here. about yourself, Mr. Bryden. I live here with my wife. I might be long in tooth, but... I can still run this farm without too much help. What did your brother find? Samuel. Samuel were his name. Sorry, what did Samuel find in the barrow? I don't know, but something went wrong. Afterward, he could barely speak. You couldn't make out a word like... That must have been hard. He lost a hand in that excavation too, you know. Goodness me, how? I try hard not to speculate on what might have happened, lass. I'd see him disappear into that barrow, dragging timber in with him. You'd hear him hammering away for hours. I offered him help, but he'd have none of it. Soon enough, he blocked the entrance off. To look at it now, you'd never know the thing we dug up. The land has reclaimed it. Who else was involved in the excavation? Two others, I believe. Outsiders, perhaps. I can't say for sure. I think they left town pretty swiftly afterwards. I lived in Bakewell at the time. I only moved back here to look after Samuel. I took over the farm when he passed away. I see. What can you tell me about your farm? Samuel's fair to side. We're a fortunate family. The soil is fertile here. Crops grow without too much trouble. All the other farmers around here raise livestock. Even Lord Panswick. We grow feed for them. Most fortunate, Mr. Bryden. 
Is your wife home? She's out in fields, lass. Pulling weeds. The curse of such fertile soil. <laughs> Forty years we've been married. I couldn't do it without her, you see. How splendid. Aye. My wife is a fine woman. Are you married, lass? No, no. I've had my fair share of proposals, Mr. Bryden, but that's not the life for me. Marriage is an important institution. You'll find a man one day. Hmm. I manage rather well without one, Mr. Bryden. Hmm. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. So, learn the shoulder. It's, this seems the timing seems really odd. That we get invited here now, but nobody's really sort of seen or knows much about this guy. They all know he's is around and they've heard of him but they haven't really seen much of him you haven't seen mr shoulder for some time i hear about him now and then but it must be a good few years since i set eyes on him he hasn't been here to visit hobbs barrow not to my knowledge i heard he's beset by ailments don't leave his home often hmm how odd i assumed he'd spoken to you about my visit not at all yeah that's really weird you say mr shoulder is at death's door what exactly ails him? I'm unsure. It's just what I've heard. I wouldn't want to speculate on matters that are not my business. Fair enough. Um, okay. What can you tell me of Lord Panswick? He keeps us going. Most of our crops go to feed his animals. What is he like? Oh, I've hardly laid eyes on him. He sends his workers here to pick up the crops. I see. So th this seems to be a pretty small village. But yeah, people... I don't run into each other an awful lot. Everyone keeps themselves themselves, it seems. It's, uh, it's, it just strikes me as a little odd. That's quite an intimidating goat you own. <laughs> the old girl does a better job of protecting this farm than any hound would. <laughs> she still produces a lot of milk for us, so we forgive her temper. Mr. Bryden, may I please have your permission to excavate Hobbs Barrow? No. Have you not been listening, lass? Samuel found something in there that's best left to rot. No digging here, lass. Ah. Uh, well, let's not be rude. Let's just... Mm. Wouldn't you like to find out more about what Samuel found in there? Perhaps. Clearly not. Well, maybe but Samuel does. boarded up that barrow for a reason. You don't want to tempt the same fate, lass. Perhaps I can at least see Hobbs Barrow. Hmm. I suppose you've come a long way to be here, lass. All the way from London, Mr. Bryden. Hmm. Have you any proof of all you've told me? You wish to see proof of what, Mr. Bryden? I can't let any Tom, Dick or Harry wander around me fields. What proof have you of your claims? You wish to see proof of what, Mr. Bryden? I can't let any Tom, Dick... What proof of... Thanks for your time. Proof. Ah, now. Proof, what proof? Letters. No, I've got the letters. Here is proof that Mr. Shoulder invited me to Bewley in order to excavate Hobbs Barrow. Leonard making bold promises, I see. Don't make me regret this. But yes, you can have a look at it. Thank you. Any road. Once you've set your eyes on it, you won't be wanting outdo with it. The place gives one a queer feeling. So where can I find it? Through that gate to your left. Just head straight across the top to the field there. After ten minutes or so, you'll see Barra. Sit on a hill ahead. Thank you again, Mr. Bryden. I really do appreciate it. All right, let's go. Ah, oh, we finally found Hobbs Barrow, but it looks like the excavation of it is still some way off. I probably should have brought my umbrella. Oh, it's raining again, yeah. Uh, okay, what have we got here? There's a stone. Perhaps I could take a closer look. Go on then. A-R. A-R. I haven't a clue what that can be referring to. No, I was then just trying to think, have we met anybody with the initials AR? I don't think we have. Finally, here it is. Hobbs Barrow. Oh, how could you tell? Oh, she is the expert in uh, barrows, I guess. Indeed, a barrow of a most unusual rectangular form. 
I've not seen something like this since West Kennet Longbarrow. Yes, this shall make a fine entry for my book. What secrets do you conceal, I wonder? That smell. Earthy and sweet. Oh, another flashback. Three, two, one. You can open your eyes now, Thomasina. Come. Are you ready for your first excavation? Yes, Daddy. Capital. Make sure you remember everything I've taught you. I have a feeling you might find something special. How exciting! I'll be watching from the steps, my little bird. Good luck! Thank you, Daddy. Oh, so he's... He's the one who kind of got us into this. Uh, so, oh, there's dirt, trowel, statue. Okay, well, first of all, we're going to want that Daddy trowel. Daddy told me I should always carry a trowel on my excavations. <laughs> I love the voice. So good. Now I'm ready. All right, well, let's start digging in the dirt. Oh, did not do it. Trail with dirt. I have a feeling it's... Nothing here. You can kind of see there's something there. Daddy has buried something here. What, what did she say about the other dirt? Oh, nothing. Okay, that's fine. I should have looked at them first, maybe. Because there's a number of uh, achievements that we've no got so far. Here. Oh, nothing there. Oh. Oh, let's look at the statue. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, okay, let's just have a look around the garden. See if there's anything else. There's another bit of dirt there by the looks of it. Daddy has buried something here. Okay, I think we'll be okay. So, like, so there's been a number of achievements so far that of getting things right first time. Or getting a certain number of things right, like with the the Shakespeare quotes to ident correctly identify three Shakespeare quotes, which we did. Um, but yeah, let's keep digging. Treasure. Hey, got it. You're so happy. Daddy, I found the treasure. Look. Well done, little bird. Your first successful excavation. That urn you're holding is very old and precious. Take good care of it, all right? I will, Daddy. I promise. So these flashbacks seem so wholesome, but the way we go into them is just unsettling. I do have a feeling there is something exceptional to be discovered here. I must gain Mr. Bryden's permission to excavate. Yeah. So I guess uh, we got. Oh no. Okay. I do. I miss. Yeah. So it looks like to be everything there. Let's check our to-do list. Return to the inn. It's time to head back for the evening. Okay. So it looks like we've gone through our first day then. So um, okay. Well, let's. Oh, I've got no access to the map there. That's interesting. Maybe there's something else to happen to us on the way back, possibly. Yeah, here we go. Something sinister is going to happen. Is it getting dark? That music is not indicative of uh, falls quickly here. happiness. I make my way back to the inn. Okay. So we do have access to the map now. Oh, the mist has rolled in, hasn't it? Okay, lots of people in here. Oh, we've got some people. Let's have a little chat to some people around. Mr. Crozier is enjoying a large mug of ale. Good evening, Mr. Crozier. Evening. Thanks again for the fossil, lass. Tis truly a beauty. You're most welcome. How long have you been collecting fossils? Ever since I were a boy. The moors look a barren place, but there are plenty of fossils to be found in the rock formations. All manner of creatures to uncover. 
Such a playground for a young lad. What's your favorite piece in your collection? The Ammonite you gave me today. The most recent is always the best. Indeed. What about you, lass? Do you collect out? I do. You see, I'm writing a book on the Barrows of England. It shall be called Vestiges of the Antiquities in Rural England. I document all my findings. But what do you collect? Pottery, tools and such. Bones too, no doubt. No, I leave those in place. You've got a morbid heart, lass. Fussing about in old graves like that. We're not dissimilar in that we both take an interest in the remains of the long gone. I suppose you have a point there. How's your book coming along, then? Very well, thank you. Though I'm rather keen to begin my chapter on Hobbs Barrow. Thanks for your time. Aye. Speak to you later. Okay, so we've got uh, some men there we don't know. This local chap looks thoroughly intoxicated. So I'm guessing... some looking brute of a man. Guessing she won't want to talk to them. Good evening, gentlemen. What are you going to do about him? If he thinks he can take her away from here, he's got another thing coming. I am going to knock his bloody block off. <laughs> In fact, I can think of a better punishment. Oi, what do you want, lady? Piss off. Oof. You heard the man. Charming. All right, we won't talk to them. It's just a, a man doing the uh, the aliens knife thing. That's He's a bit engaged weird. in a bout of pin finger. Pin Such finger. Such a brutal hobby. That, I've never heard it called that before. Good evening, sir. It's distracting if he stabs himself. Uh, I'll leave you to it. <laughs> okay. Oh, Herbert. It's Herbert, the local stray. So Herbert came into our room the other day, even though we had the door locked. And it was locked when we woke up in the morning as well. I don't wish to wake him up. Yeah, probably not. It will murder us in our sleep. Cyril seems gruff and unwelcoming, but I sense he may be a kind man under this facade. Hello again, Cyril. You're still here? Did Mr. Long convince you of the virtues of Bewley Station? What the hell do you think? <laughs> now bugger off and leave me to me drink. Fair enough. He seems even more wound up than usual. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Alright, last person to speak to is Stanley Kemp. Good evening, Miss Bateman. Good evening, Stanley. I found Hobbs Barrow. Oh, remember what I said, Miss Bateman? There are stories connected to that place. Yes, yeah, stories you won't elaborate on, I might add. Don't worry about me, Stanley. I'm quite capable of warding off imagined fiends. I have no doubt, but please leave that place be. I've come this far. There's no turning back now. That's precisely what worries me. Yeah, see, the thing is about... um. Uh, the stories connected to the barrow she's writing a book about the barrows so finding one with a lot of stories connected to it is obviously going to be so intriguing should we have a drink let's have a drink at the end of the day a mug of your finest ale please there we are that's two pence on your account thank you you know I'm racking up those numbers there Goodbye. See you soon. Hmm, interesting. All right, I'm going to go... Yeah, I'm going to go to bed. Time for bed. Tomorrow I shall convince Mr. Bryden to allow me to begin my excavation. Miss Bateman. Who was that? Oh, I was just... How uh, are you? Uh, Tired. Mr. Tillett. Gonna buy you a drink? Uh, sure. One, one won't hurt. Perhaps I can gain more information from Mr. Tillett. Yeah. One won't hurt. Excellent. I feel bad about what happened last night. I'm sorry I can't remember it. That's all right, Mr. Tillett. Alcohol can do all sorts of damage to one's memory. I was thinking that maybe if we had another drink tonight, I might remember what happened. I'm not sure that's logical. <laughs> but worth trying? <laughs> Absolutely. I don't need any further convincing. Take your seat, Miss Bateman. I shall return with the goods. To Leonard's shoulder. 
Whatever he may be. I wonder what's going to happen here. to ask you something. Yes? Why did Leonard Shoulder ask you to dig up Hobbs Barrow? Despite his disappearing act the previous evening, not to mention his questionable sobriety, I decided Mr. Tillett was to be my ally. Okay. I spoke again of Mr. Shoulder's letter, his proposed excavation and my status as an antiquarian and barrow digger. He was fascinated and quite excited at the prospect of meeting the soon-to-be author of a real-life book. You must find all manner of riches on your digs. Barrow digging is not all success, Mr. Tillett. Often I'll come across the likeliest of sites steeped in promise. We set to work with shovel and pick and all the other barrow opening paraphernalia you can imagine. Every stone carefully taken down. Every shovel full of earth put dutifully through the sieve, and we find nothing. Or you may find a miserable remnant of animal bone or a shard of pottery hardly to be recognized from the peat in which it decayed. Sometimes it's as if some Neolithic humorist prepared an elaborate practical joke for your special benefit. It still sounds much more exciting than spending your days sitting in England's most remote railway station. <sighs> Are you all right, Mr. Tillett? I've had another argument with Agnes. Your wife? Aye. She didn't want me coming to the plough tonight. Truth is, I've been drinking my life away since my mother passed. Oh, that's terrible. I'm sorry for your loss. You're kind, Miss Bateman. Thank you. It's been a year since the old girl left us. She had a horrible end. Wasting away, day by day. Consumption got her. She would know, but bones by the end. I can't get the image out of my mind. She were everything to me. I'm so sorry. I apologize for going on, Miss Bateman. It's not appropriate. Don't worry, Mr. Tillett. I appreciate your openness. I used to love going for walks out in the moor, my mother and I, ever since I were a little one. She'd get a tear in her eye as she looked out upon it. She loved this land. I asked Mr. Crozier to build a bench which we've erected at a favourite ah. lookout spot on the moors. Margaret's Lookout, yep. we called it. That's Aye. where the bench is named after. That's a beautiful tribute. Aye. If you take a seat there, do keep her in your thoughts, won't you? Of course, Mr. Tillett. I can relate in some manner. My father had an accident when I was very young. He's still alive, but he can neither move nor speak. He spends his entire life bedbound and incapable of communicating or looking after himself in any way. How dreadful. He was that a barrow digger awful. himself, an antiquarian of some renown. He taught me so much, even though I was so young. I think writing this book is my way of carrying on his work. It helps me reclaim those earlier memories of him, and I visit him often to tell him all about my excavations. Can he hear you? I've no idea. The doctors aren't sure. I do anything to make him better, Mr. Tillett. I do anything to bring him back to the man he was. I am in a state of suspended mourning for a man caught between life and death. Dreadful. Just dreadful. We all have our weaknesses. Mine just happens to be my father. And what of your mother? A cold woman. We haven't talked in quite some time. I think she blamed me for my father's accident somehow. You were but a child. Indeed. She thus saw it fit that a governess should raise me as she spent her life grieving for my father. Well then, I propose a toast. A toast to what? A shared sense of loss. I'll toast to that, Arthur. Jeez. Now then, enough of this wallowing. Let us be merry. Another round. I really shouldn't. But I did. <laughs> and another after oh, that. God. And another. I'm bladdered. The frustrations of my visit to Bewley slipped away with each swill of Stanley's finest ale. We had great fun that night, Mr. Tillett and I. Did you? I treasure the memory. Oh. Do you now? Go on then! Let's hear those pipes! Uh, mustn't. <laughs> Sing the song! <laughs> You're incorrigible! Please. She's sloshed. You'll make a sad man happy. Oh, all right then.
clasps Celts and arrowheads I'll try to claw within my clutch. And if a shield I should espy, I'll vow there ne'er was such. With popish tricks and relics rare, the priests their flocks do gull. In casting out the earth take care. Huzzah! I've found a skull! Wow. This game's got some, some deep story to it. Oh, okay, are we going to get a visit by the cat again? Or something worse? Oh, here we go. What's this? Oh, what is this? Okay, well, you know what? Uh, I think we're going to leave this nightmarish dream sequence for the next episode. Um, I think, yeah, I think that's probably a good place to leave it. So, okay, we found Hobbs Barrow, but we need to get permission to dig it. We're finding out deep lore about her history. It's not particularly pleasant. Um, and we're now having strange dreams. Uh, that was something that was uh, told to us in the description of this game. If you read the description of my videos here, that, well, that's what it says about the game. She starts having strange dreams, and this is when things are going to start going wrong. So we, we, we're, we're a reasonable way into the game. And so far, there's been a slight sense of unsettling um, um, moments in this game so far, but nothing overtly a horror or or too scary but i think things might be beginning to change um yeah so i'm super excited to find out what's going to happen but we are going to save it here leave it for the next one so please do let me know what you think in the comment section make sure you subscribe if you haven't already so you can see what's going to happen in this intriguing game i'm really quite enjoying this um and uh, i will see you in the next video goodbye